gonna be on it. Um, and we could just start by posting our dominion scripture. So if you have your dominion scripture, post that thing. Post that thing. Because we need to see it. We need to see it. Post it. This has my dominion scripture in it. And I wrote the times that I needed it in here and everything. So this is the section in which I write my dominion scripture and when I need it to get me together. So here's mine, people. Just let you know, I'm doing it with you, okay? Um, Psalm 46.5. Thank you, Jessica. Um, anybody else have one? Mine is Philippians 4.8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, what, whatever, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever... Whatsoever things are true, whatever, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So that is my dominion scripture. This was Psalm 46.5. So I'm going to read everyone's dominion scripture out loud. I got the KJV. Um, 46.5, right, Jessica? It says, God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Bam. So I'm 138.8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Bam. Isaiah 43, 1. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get Isaiah 43, 1. Erica, you don't have yours yet. Okay, make sure you have yours, girl. 43.1. Right? Yes. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Wow. That is a good one. I like that one. Dominion, dominion, dominion. All these scriptures. Yup. Yeah, I like them. I love it. Okay. So let's just get started. Let's jump right in. Okay. One, sorry, excuse me. My nose is running. Why my nose going to run when I hot point? Can I read to you guys one of my entries about um, why I use my Dominion scripture? Okay. So I'm going to read to you my entry because I want you guys to understand that I'm in this with you guys. I'm learning. I'm studying. I'm applying just like you guys. Um, I was in the car driving home from Columbia to meet Zanitra, who gifted me with some planning materials. I was thinking about the planner stuff I wanted, and then I thought about my desire to do a memory planner. And then my thoughts were, but my thoughts were, if only this, and if only that, I had to stop this negative snowball that was forming. I didn't think my focus scripture could apply, but the deeper I thought about it, the scripture I the, th the deeper I thought about the scripture, I noticed that if you are con consistently thinking about things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, how could there be any room for complaint, in contentment, or any other negative thing? This revelation just freed me up to be thankful for everything I have, which is a lot. So that was my experience with my focus scripture or my dominion scripture last week. My mind... Um, I wasn't content. I was desiring everything. A lot of times when you watch a lot of YouTube videos or when you watch a lot of TV, whatever it may be, food commercials, you start to desire the things that they have, not even giving gratitude for what you have, not even using half of the things you have. So my focus scripture helped me to get right back on point and realize that if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, if I focus on the things that are just pure, holy, in my, like, period, why, what, why would I not be content? Why would I not be content? Right? So that's my, um, that was my 
um, focus scripture section. In my spill to journal, planner, whatever. Let's get on to the good stuff. So we're going to go straight into Genesis 2, 7. The Lord God formed man of dust and of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Listen, this thing is deep. Let's get into it. So what were the contents of Adam? One, dust. Two, breath of life. Um... Dust is defined as, from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, fine, dry powder consisting of tiny particles of earth or waste matter lying on the ground or on surfaces or carried in the air. And then it says breath of life. And um, breath of life is the spirit, the actual spirit spirit of God. He blew into him the spirit of God, the very being of God. He 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 blew into him, right? And that is what awoken that clay lifeless body and made it a living soul, right? So if you have the spirit of God breathe into you which which jolts your body and brings you to life, what is in the spirit of God? It is the fruit of the spirit. It is the seed of God. That is what it is, right? Dominion right there. He gave him the breath of life. Now let's break this down. Adam was made by God combining dust and the breath of life, correct? Dust is made up of dirty particles, waste, and debris. It is usually the substance that rests upon old and useless objects. God also used the breath of life. He he. He used he also used the breath of life. He mixed this, he mixed his very spirit with dirty particles, waste, and debris, and produced a man with a living soul. Wow. Listen to this. Dust is the least of things. When you think of dust, like it's nothing compared to, to everything God created, dust is absolutely the least of the things that God had created. But the thing is that when he mis mixed the dust with his very breath of life, he got the most amazing, he made, he created the most amazing creature of them all. Think about it. In Genesis chapter one, we learned that Adam was made last out of all of creation, right? And God says, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, correct? And that happened. How? Genesis is just a reverberation of everything else that's happening in the Bible. Adam was created last. The Bible says, that the first shall be last and the last shall be first, correct? And Adam was last and what was he given? Dominion. He was put back up, right? Then what happened was he created Adam out of dust. Absolutely. I mean, dust is nothing, right? It's nothing. We wipe that away daily. We wipe dust away all the time. He made Adam out of dust as well as the breath of life, correct? And created this amazing creature right that was going to rule over the whole entire earth dominion what happened again the least of these things he gave dominion dust dirt the thing that we don't want the thing that no one wants in life he took and put his spirit and he formed it right the word um let me see Formed in Hebrew. In Hebrew, that word is formed, molded. It's it's synonymous with being on the potter's wheel, and the potter molds it to its purpose. In the Hebrew, that's in the booklet. If you download the booklet, it has those details in it. But in the Hebrew, that's what that word translates to: being on the potter's wheel and being molded and shaped and squeezed and positioned for purpose for the, so that the potter can can shape the bowl for its purpose. You know, if you want a cereal bowl, it has to be a little deep, right? So you can pour the milk in a cereal in and you can get to eating and you don't want the milk to all and the cereal to all fall over. You know, if you want a um, just a snack bowl, it may not be as deep. It may be more wide, right? So you don't have to, so when you grab, you don't have to put your hand in a specific spot. You can watch a movie and grab in your snack bowl because the snack bowl is wider, right? So when you have, when you're, when God puts you on that wheel and is molding Adam, he molded Adam 
to his domain and to the purpose he would have him to be. And that is what he has done with each and every one of us. Don't you ever think because you don't have the best job, because you don't have the best car, because you don't have a husband, because you don't have a boyfriend, because you have a kid without a husband, that you are, that your dominion is canceled. Don't you ever, don't you ever cancel yourself out. Don't you ever relinquish your dominion that easily. The least of these things. Because me, when I tell you, when I always say this about me, to this world, I'm nothing. I'm trash. I am literally trash. Number one, I don't have a father, right? Right? Number two, I'm a double minority, meaning an African American as well as a woman, right? Um... I grew up in poverty. I grew up in government housing. I mean, the lowest of the lowest, lowest on the totem pole, right? Humbled. That's how God humbles you. But that's low, low, not small, but low. And I got that from my friend Von Tree. She said that at her um, Relentless Pursuit Conference. Not small, but low. He creates us low. He creates his kids, his children low so that what? When he breathes that breath and breath of life into you, you're automatically catapulted back to the top to reign in your dominion, to govern in your dominion, to walk in your dominion, and to live out your dominion responsibility. So don't you ever think that you're small, that you're that you're insignificant because of your life experiences, because of your choices in life. You are always going to be catapulted to the top when and if you continue to connect yourself and attach yourself to the Holy Spirit, to the breath of life that is within you. Okay, so don't you ever think because of your experiences in life that you are less than, that you're small, that you're insignificant. You may have experienced lowliness, right? Humbled a little bit, right? Okay, eating mayonnaise sandwiches and all of that. But that does not disqualify you from the dominion that God has given you. Your dominion was given to you as soon as he, first of all, as soon as he, thought about you before he even put you in your mother's womb your dominion was given to you in creation when god said that mankind would have dominion all over creation your dominion was given to you again when he actually breathed his spirit into your dirt and created royalty and created dominion and created a sovereign ruler over whatever it is he has called you to do okay now, let's go to Genesis 2.15. God placed Adam in the garden to dress it and keep it. Why? Because that was his dominion responsibility. Now, in order to govern something, in order to rule over something, in order to have dominion over something, you got to work. Okay? You have to work for it. It doesn't just come by you just sitting there and absorbing everything. It comes by you putting in work. God had, but God creates for you the perfect environment for you to do that work that he has called you to do. Correct. He, God created the perfect environment for Adam to be able to do what he had to do. Correct. So don't think that when you, when it says it's not by your works because your environment was already created for you to succeed if you are functioning in your dominion. So it's, that's why it's not by your works because your environment was already created for you to succeed. But because you have free will, you are given a responsibility and you can either do it or you don't. But if you step outside of that responsibility, you are now walking outside of your dominion. And who knows what happens outside of there. Correct? Okay. So then Genesis 2, 15 through 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of the tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This really got me. So listen up, turn your volume up, get your pencils out and write your notes. Okay. So God has given now God, whenever God gives you anything, he is going to give you rules and he is going to give you 
consequences. Why? Because you have free will, correct? You can either do it or you don't. He's not forcing you to any which way. And because of that, you have to have the option to go outside of what he told you to do. So the option was presented, but God told Adam, bruh, this is what you can do. And this is what I don't need you to do. And if you do what I told you not to do, this is the consequence. Okay. He tells him that he should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the same day that he eats of the tree, he will surely die. So I want you to think about this. What happens when you die? Write that in the comments. So when God said to Adam that he would die, I believe that he is not only talking about a physical death. I don't think he's only talking about a physical death, but he's also talking about a spiritual one. And if we, and, and for real, for real, I'm fearful of the spiritual death more than I'm fearful of the physical one. Okay, because let's think about it. A death that revokes, so a spiritual death. And a spiritual death is a death that revokes the breath of God, which is the very spirit of God. The very thing that changed Adam from dust into a living soul. Life without God is death. Without God, we are just our makeup, which is dirt. Nothing. We are small at that point because dust is the most tiniest thing. With God, we are a living, we are a living being with dominion responsibility. The spirit of God engages your dominion. The spirit of God keeps you connected to God who gives, reminds, and calls you to your jurisdiction to apply your dominion. Without it, you revert back to life without breath. You divert, revert back to losing control of bodily and physically function. You wonder why when you're out of the will of God, you can't control the fact that you still want to talk to these dark, these darn guys. You 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 get you relinquish your dominion and talk to the guy that you wasn't supposed to be talking to. And now you didn't step out of his will and it's just like it just snowballs into whoa, I was just gonna text him back. And now who knows what didn't happen, you know. Because you, you went outside of the will of God. You ate from the tree. You ate from that tree he told you not to. And so now you done lost all bodily function. You can't control yourself. Stay within the will of God. Stay in the garden, sis. Stay in the garden, sis. Plant them flowers. Eat the other fruit, sis. Darkness, right? All of that happens when you die. Um. Without it, you resort back to the dirt of the earth. Easily moved. Easily moved. I mean, your emotions are everywhere because what happens? Dust and dirt is literally earthly. It's e literally earthly. It's literally worldly. So you cannot control your emotions because you are now turned. You are now, you now gave your body back to the earth. And so you gave your body back to the world. And so now you're everywhere just being moved to and fro and you can't even control yourself. You're worldly now because you've now eaten of the tree that God told you not to. Without it, you resort back to the dirt of the earth, easily move, attaching yourself to old, useless, and eat old, useless objects and easily wiped away. The difference between you and the nature of animals, pets, lions, sharks, snakes is the breath of life. And when you choose to operate outside of what God has told you to and the breath of life is taken or revoked or or buried, you revert back to the to the attitude, the actions of an animal. Wild and uncontrollable. So the only thing that separates you from that is the breath of life. And once you choose to <laughs> says says you wild. Like you wild, real wild. You real wild. Get yourself. Get back in the cause you wild. Okay. Okay. Boom. Hope that makes sense. So now we're gonna jump to Genesis 2 21. Dominion in the making of Eve, y'all. This is so freaking deep. I really hope that y'all hold on, hold on. Hold on, clutch your pearls. Don't be mad at me when I say these things. 
Or you can be. Either way, be mad and be changed. You don't got to talk to me no more. But you do got to change. Because what I'm about to say is about to be real. Okay? Okay. Genesis 2, 21. And the Lord God... So, wait. I'm skipping, I'm skipping, I'm skipping. So, it says... After he told him that, it says... And... And the Lord God said, it is not, so after he said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. Yes, put it on. Thou shalt not eat it, for in the day thou eateth, that therefore, thereof, thou shalt surely die. Then he says, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. So imagine this, add him out there. The next verse says, and out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was thereof. So in all of this, in all of Genesis, God says, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. But when he sees that Adam is alone, he saw that that wasn't good. But why was he able to see, able to see that it was not good that Adam was alone? Number one, he's God, right? Boom, bam, pow. But honestly, because Adam was functioning in his dominion, if Adam was... Adam is supposed to be, and imagine this, Adam is out naming all the animals, and all of the animals have a pair, but Adam is by himself, number one. Number two, Adam is in his dominion. So imagine Adam supposed to be gardener, you know? He supposed to be over there in the garden. He supposed to be, you know, the florist, pruning, digging, all of that. But Adam's like, that's not going to make me enough money. This will be, that's not going to make me enough money doing that. So what I'm going to do is go over here and learn this thing and do that. And then you go over there and do that. If Adam was doing that, God wouldn't have seen that he, he needed some help, that it wasn't good. Because guess what? You over there flourishing, doing something that God hadn't called you to do, and you're not satisfied. But God can't, God is not going to give you help where you're not supposed to be. Right? So because Adam was in his dominion, God was able to see, okay, he needs a help me. He needs to help me. Like, I can see he's functioning where he's supposed to be, and he needs to help me. Stay in your dominion. Stay in your place. You know when you're supposed to be telling me, stay in your place. If you if you are, mm, let me tell you something. This just came to my mind. When I was young, has to do with this, I promise. My mom would always tell me to go someplace and come straight home. Every time. That I did outside of that, I got caught up. Something bad happened. Something bad happened. I'm going to tell you all this story. That's like Adam. Adam, God said, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you, I placed you in the garden. Do what you're supposed to do in the garden. Don't eat this. Don't touch that. And you're going to be straight. And I saw that you need to help me. Good. Bam. But for me, when I was younger, I always wanted to be sneaky because I was kind of like on a short leash. So whenever my mother gave me a little bit of room, I pushed it a bit. Bad things happen. Same thing happens with God. One day my mother told me to go to the grocery store. Ride your bike to the grocery store. Just get a couple of things and come straight home. Don't make no stops. I rolled my little bike to the grocery store, swiped the food stamp card at Safeway, got what we needed to get, came back home, but I or was on the way back home, but I stopped at the rack because I seen my little my got seen my little boyfriend was there. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna run in real quick, say hi, be fresh, and then run back out and go home. My mother will never know. I'm only gonna be here for two seconds. Sis. When I say I saw my life flash before my eyes, number one, we on food stamps, limited resource. So we need all the groceries that can get got. Yes, that can get got with that money. I came out of that recreation center. Y'all, the groceries were gone. I looked up the street. There were two boys running, running, sis, with my groceries. I was like, I'm about to get in trouble. I'm about to get pop, spank, whatever word you want to use. I was going to get it. 
if I would have just stayed, listened, right? I'd have been straight. But I didn't listen. So I had to go home and tell my mother what I had did. And y'all, my mother was mad. Mad. The boys was running, they was running, they was running, they was running. My mother said, y'all, she snatched a bike from me. My mother, my mother got on the back bike and chased them boys down. And she caught them. Turned out they was our next new neighbors that done moved in. That done stole my groceries. Y'all, I got in trouble. And then, let me tell you something. God always brings it full circle. And he reminded me. Because when I went to Morgan, had, tell me why one of the boys that stole my groceries was going to Morgan too. And that reminded me, uh, do what your mother said do. Just because you're out here in college don't mean you can be out here acting crazy. I did act crazy anyway. And bad things happened again. But it was a reminder. Boom, bam, pow. Okay, anyway. So... God was able to see that Adam needed to help me because he was functioning in your dominion. So when you're functioning in your dominion, when you're functioning in the purpose of God, he will send your help. He will send your help because he can see that you need help and he will provide it for you. Okay, so let's go on. The Lord was able to create help for help me for Adam. For Adam and from Adam because Adam was walking in his dominion when you are operating in your dominion you are aligned with the will of God and when you are in the will of God God is going to be able to assess your territory your jurisdiction and make plans and moves for your advancement because your advancement at that point is his advancement right if you're working in the will of God in the dominion of God your advancement is God's advancement so guess what it's going to work together for your good that's why it says all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose so you may be struggling right now where you are in your dominion but it's all working for your good what happened God created the whole earth he said it was good it was good it was good it was good he said it's all good it's all good and then what did he do? He gave it to God, to Adam. So God literally created the whole word, world, said it was good, and then handed it to Adam. So what did he do? All things, the whole earth was working together for the good of Adam. He withheld no good thing. He made it all good and gave it to him. My God. Oh, okay. So sometimes it will it will cost you something, but you won't even know. Like like if you're working in God's dominion, if you're working the purpose that He's given you, it will cost you something, but it really won't because you won't even notice. Let's move on. In this case, it cost Adam a rib, but I don't even think Adam knew he lost a rib or whatever part was given. But what is a rib compared to aligning yourself seamlessly with the will of God over your life? Sorry, I keep looking down. The Lord caused, let me put it up here. My notes. The Lord caused Adam to sleep. So this is what happens, right? God is able to see that you need help, that, that you need something. Whatever it is that you need, he sees that you need it when you're working in his dominion and he provides. But what happens when you're working in his dominion is that you may know, but you like, but I'll be good, right? I'll be all right. And you're able to rest in him. That's like Adam. Adam, he said, he caused a deep sleep to go over Adam and Adam slept. So he, so imagine us, like we want to do everything in our own will and fix and fix and fix. We're not the fixers. We're the doers. God is the fixer. We're the doer. We're trying to step into God's dominion and be the fixer and the creator when we're just the doers. We're just the workers. And so what happened was because Adam was functioning his dominion, he was able to get some good sleep. He didn't even know he needed help. My man was knocked out. He was asleep. He was slumped. I mean, however you want to say it. But it wasn't the type of sleep that we experienced. It wasn't the type of experience, sleep that we experienced daily. It was a supernatural type of sleep that only God could provide through his power and his providence. Um, and it wasn't drowsiness. It wasn't like tiredness as in he'd been ripping and running so much trying to do everything like we are ripping and running. He wasn't tired and, and fussy like our kids are when they don't take their nap. No, he was in a deep sleep. Okay, deep, peaceful sleep. Why? Because he was resting in 
God. He was in his dominion, didn't even notice he needed help, and was able to rest in God so God could do the work to fix it and to be able to give him what he needed to for his advancement, which is also God's advancement because he is working in his dominion. Let's move on. Adam's senses and everything were shut down. His sleep was so good that, like, my man was knocked out. All his senses, his pain, every, he couldn't feel anything. God literally cut this man open, flesh open. He ain't, people be thinking God is some magician where he's just going to say, whoop, doop, doop, no, 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 no. Like a surgeon would have done, God sliced this man open, went in his flesh and grabbed the a rib, a whole entire rib. He grabbed the whole entire rib out. Okay. His senses were so locked up in that that he perceived not anything was done to him. It seemed to have been on purpose, right? That he might feel no pain while the apparition was made upon him, as well as that it might appear that he had no hands in the formation of women. Of women. So let me tell you this. You don't need to have a hand in the fixings of your life when you're working in the dominion of God. You don't need to do it. God is going to do it. You need to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, talking to who you're supposed to be talking to, doing the work, your dominion responsibility. And as you're doing that, God will provide the help you need when you need it, how you need it. If you go out here trying to do everything yourself and everything else, your hand, can you cut your own flesh open, grab a rib out, and make yourself a help me? No, then shut up and sit down. Did you create the whole earth? Okay, no. That's not your dominion. Stay in your place. Literally, stay in a child's place. Rest in God. Rest in the Lord. My son sleeps so good because he know I'm going to feed him. He know he ain't missing no meals. Not one. Right? God is better than an earthly parent. Better. That's her. Okay. And not only that, listen to this. God was able, in, in doing it, God produced Adam's help meet from Adam. He didn't go out to Home Depot and go build him one. He didn't go out to the left of the garden and build him one. It came from inside of Adam. Inside of Adam. Right? I'm sorry. I'm skipping. People that bought the booklet, I'm skipping some things. I don't have the booklet in front of me. So the, the, the four steps were God caused Adam or deep sleep, God caused Adam to, to go into a deep sleep, right? Adam slept. He took his ribs. And he closed up the flesh. Those are the four steps. And right now, I'm talking about how Adam, I mean, Eve was created. Adam's help was created from Eve. Like that fruit-bearing tree. Remember the fruit-bearing tree? God. That produces fruit, us. That has the seed within itself, the Holy Spirit. When you're working in your dominion and you have that breath in life of life in you, you have a seed that God take, was able to take that seed and produce good fruit to help you. So when you're, help, when you're working in your dominion, right, guess what? That breath of life is in you because you have not walked outside of it. You have not forsaken him. You have not, you know, walked outside of that dominion. So you have, you're the fruit that has the seed within itself. So God does not have to go left or right looking for another tree to pick from. He can get it right from you, the source. When you're working in your dominion, it's in you already. The Holy Spirit, it's in you. It's in you. You look into the left and to the right. Uh -huh. You look to God. Let God do it. It's in you. Adam was able, he was, be able, was able to be created by Adam because Adam was in his what? Do. Yo, and if I say dominion one more time, and I hope it's making sense because y'all quiet. So when you're working in your dominion, your help will come from yourself. You're thinking, oh, I need to hire this person and that person and this person and that person and this person and that person. No, you need to hire yourself. You need to work in your dominion. You need to 
Give it to God. You need to make sure that you are in the will of God, in the dominion of God. You need to make sure you're functioning in that place. And when you're in that place, it will come from you. I don't know how, but it surely would. For me, let me tell you how this works for me. People literally fall in my lap that are connected. My speakers to my, my first purpose party. I was scared at Martin's West. Child, I don't know who I thought I was. I ain't had no money for no Martin's West. I was scared, but I did it anyway. And when I did it, it was sold out. My, no, none of my speakers charged me. One of them flew out from Atlanta. I met her on Instagram and slid in her DMs. And she flew out from Atlanta to come and speak. Did not charge me one dime. Bless the whole place. If I tell you my first purpose party was amazing and it was all I know that it was all because I was working in my dominion. My second part purpose party was amazing too. Thinking of my speakers. My second purpose party was amazing too. But I was scared and I changed the location because I was like, I'm not going to be able to afford it. And all this fear came in and I gave a sensation. I was like, you're right. You're not going to be able to afford it. I didn't have my purpose scripture or my dominion scripture memorized. Right. And I gave into it and I switched locations and it was, it was still amazing. It was still amazing, but I do not think that it, I do not think it was in God's perfect will. I still had the purpose party. I think that was his will, but it was not in his perfect will. And I had to pull teeth. I didn't have a lot of money and all these things. When I did it at, at um, Martin's West, I made my money back plus some. When I did it at the other place, I ain't make no money, sis. Martin's West was over $2,000. The event space that I got for the second one was 400 Stay in his dominion. I will always give you real life examples from my life. Always. Bam, boom, pow. Last thing is this. God closed up the womb. Does that speak to you? He'll close up your wounds. He will not leave you open, susceptible to infection. He will close up your wounds. He created a sterile environment. So think about this. This is all the way back at the first thing where he was, a, he was able to cause Adam to go to a deep sleep and Adam was able to sleep. Imagine this. When you get surgery, where are you? In the OR, in the operation room. And that's where your surgery takes place. Imagine if Adam was, um, somebody's like, oh, yeah, we could just do the surgery right here in your house with your kids running around. Right? You gonna, I mean, how that's gonna work? That's not sterile. It's not clean. Anything, anything can happen and jump in that womb when he would have cut God open. And that's why you, you wonder why, well, God can still bless me here. But when he, sometimes he has to cause a wound to bless you, right? And when that happens, you could be susceptible to any type of things, just jumping in your spirit. But when he cuts you open, when you're in your dominion, however that looks in the natural, like, you're not susceptible to all that. You're not susceptible to the, to the things in the physical that could infect your mind your spirit your soul and cause you even deeper harm just like a surgeon when god when god needs to do an operation on you you have to be in your dominion you have to be in that sterile environment you have to be in the or the ord the operation room of dominion you have to be there, sis. You can't be any and everywhere talking about, well, he can still use me here. No, he's going to use you where you're supposed to be. He's going to send your helpmate, whatever that is at this point in your life, where you're supposed to be. And he's going to close up that wound, just like any good surgeon would do. He's going to close up that wound so good that you ain't even going to know it was there. Presents you just as perfect and as flawless and in your as perfect and flawless as you were when you were first born without blemish that's what happens when you stay in god purpose and flawless flawless and without blemish 
And that hits home for me because I know I'm not flawless and I know I'm not without imperfection. But I know that if I stay in the will of God and do what he's doing in my life, no matter what operations I go under, whatever, no matter what things I go through during this time, I know that he will present me in a, that's my cat and my husband about to come in. He will present me. He will wash me. He will close my womb and you won't even be able to tell what done happened to me. Like you, you went through what? You, you did what? That happened to you? Just as flawless. And not only because of the way I look, but because of my spirit, but because of the seed that is within me, because of the fruit of the spirit that's present in my life, because of my stewardship, but because of my kindness, but because of my love, but because of my patience. That, that is it. That is what will keep me close up my wound and present me as flawless but that is our second video on dominion and i really hope that it blessed you and i really hope that you're ready to head to the ord i really hope that you are placing yourself in a sterile environment under the dominion of god and you're, you're operating in your dominion responsibility so that when it's time to get under, to go, to head to the ORD, you're ready. Sterile environment. God can do what he needs to do in, in your life. And afterwards, you're not holding on to this yucky stuff where you have to go see Sharmika because, yes, you're saved. And, yes, the fruit of the spirit is there. But emotionally, you're done. Because you done stayed outside of the perfect will of God and you done chose to go to the left and the right. Um, but, you know, like you won't be just mm, bruised, just battered because you decided to step out of the will of God here and eat a little bit of the fruit there and, you know, tap into a little bit I wasn't supposed to do there. You know, just stay in the will of God. Stay in a place where you're ready for operation. Stay ready for surgery ain't that crazy nobody wants surgery but i want you to stay ready for surgery stay ready for the operation always be ready to be operated on where god can produce your help from you and he don't gotta go anywhere and everywhere but it's you your spirit draws your help your spirit draws your help um if you haven't already make sure to pick your dominion scripture if you enjoyed this and you want to keep this study, go back and download Worksheet 1, um, Booklet 1, Worksheet 2, Booklet 2. If you download the booklets, the worksheet is included in the booklet. The, work, the booklets are only $5.99. And if you add them to your cart with something else, it's like 15% off. If you refer a friend, it's 15% off. So just make sure that you download this and you dig deep in this. I'm giving this to you. I'm spoon feeding it to you. But check me. Who going to check me? You going to check me. Get back in your word and study it. That I'm selling you good and good stuff, right stuff. This is not only something to get you out there like, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. No, this is to get you together. It's to get you together. It's to get me together. So let's get together together, okay? Make sure to download the worksheets, which are free, or the booklets, or a combination, whichever one you choose, so that you can dig deeper into this word. Feel free to ask me any questions, but what I want you to do is get ready for the ORD. Walk in your dominion. Dominion comes from God. So how do you walk in your dominion? Dominion is God. You know God. Get in your word. The Bible says the word became flesh, right? Jesus, but the word became flesh. He became flesh. Jesus, him, God is dominion. God is the word. Read the word. Get it in you. Understand it. Learn it. Search it. Question it. And get it done. Know God. That's how you'll know your dominion. It's not one little thing. It's everything. Walking in your dominion starts with knowing God. So I just challenge you to get ready for the ORD by digging deeper into your relationship with God. Not making it a checklist, but making it a habit. Not a habit, not a lifestyle. I mean, not a not making a checklist, but making it a lifestyle. Not a lifestyle like we do diets where you're yo-yoing. Not like that. I mean a true lifestyle where you know 
when you feel it, you read it. Not a checklist where, okay, I didn't do it today. Let me check this. Oh, no, I'm feeling convicted. Blah, blah, blah. Or I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling down on myself. I'm beating myself up. Why would you beat yourself up about getting in the word when the Bible says no condemnation? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Just get in the flow of a relationship. It's like you would do with somebody physically. You want to get to know them. Not somebody physically like that, but somebody physically like somebody here on earth. If you have a girlfriend you want to get to know or you're trying to get to know a guy romantically, get a boyfriend, whatever you want to call it, um, or a good girlfriend, you just want to get to know them. You want to spend time with them. You want to go out to lunch with your sister, with your good girlfriends. You want to, you know, get to know them, spend time with them. I mean, listen to some music, listen to podcasts in the car, you know, get the audible Bible, hear it. Whatever you have to do before you go to sleep, read, but get ready for the ORD. Okay, ladies? So thank you so, so, so much. We'll be back with um, part two or three of Dominion. It gets much better because we about to get into the serpent and Eve. It gets so good. Hey, you. Can I learn your flavor? It's brand new. Now it's in the papers. All I seem to